bless his holy name right where you are. Can I get you to just stand to your feet as we get ready to go to God in worship today? For I don't know about you, but this is the day that the Lord hath made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Right where you are, I need to just lift up your hand and begin to tell God something sweet today. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much he's been good to you. Tell him how much he is a wonderful God. He's benevolent. He's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. God is great and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun, yes sir, to the going down of the saint, our God is great and greatly to be praised. Listen, wherever you, wherever you are right now, take a moment and just share this video on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, send somebody the link, create a watch party, do something. Let somebody know that New Zion is on the air. Come worship and fellowship with us this morning. Listen, I don't know where you may be watching from. You might not be here where we are in Charlotte, North Carolina, but wherever you are, put it in the comments. We want to hear from you. We want to reach out to you. So wherever city, state, wherever you are, just let us know, and uh, we'll be connecting with you. I want to read a scripture for you today, the book of Psalm, Psalm number 100. And it says it like this. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. One more time for those in the back. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for life and health. We thank you for uh, being able to gather in this sacred space called sanctuary on another Sunday morning just to worship you. For we know that you alone are God. We've searched all over. But we couldn't find nobody, nobody greater than you. And because of that, God, we know that you are the greatest power and we will never be defeated. So, God, we've come today just to lift up your holy name. We've come to give your name the praise. We've come to give your name the glory. So now we ask you, Father, that you would breathe on this service today. We ask you, God, to bless the psalmist. Bless, bless the preached word, God. We ask you just to move and have your way. Don't let us leave the same way we came. God, we bind up the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We command him to go back to the pits of hell. We, he has no power. He has no victory. And he has no authority. God, we thank you now. And we give you glory for the things that we know are on the way. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on, New Zion. Bless God with me today. Come on, open up your mouth and bless God with me today. As we welcome our guest song, and Sister Reba Green. Come on, let's thank God as she comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God in this place today. We reverence you, God. We welcome you into this atmosphere, God. We ask that you have your way in this place. We praise you, God, because you're the King of kings and you're the Lord of lords. God, you are the great I am. And you are a great God. So if you would, choose to today. Begin to lift up your hands and open your mouths and give our great big God a great big praise. God, we love you. God, we adore you. God, you're amazing. You're excellent, God. You are our master. And that's why we stand and we bask in your presence. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no
Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Well, there's a cross for each of us. There is a cross for you and me. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Spirit of the Most High God, Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you that you are the God that sits high and looks low. God, we thank you that you are the one that is still on the throne. And Father, right now, whether we are in our car, whether we are on our couch, whether we are at the breakfast table, regardless where we are, Father, right now, we're just going to lift our hand to heaven, Father, just to come into agreement that we recognize how great and how mighty and how awesome and how outstanding you are. God, we bless you in the name of Jesus. So, Father, for this morning, as we're having worship, dear God, we pray that you'll inundate us with your presence like never before. Reach us where we've never been reached. Touched us in a way we've never been touched, God. And we will forever give you all the praise. We love you, Father, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us again for our 10 a.m. worship service. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, we just want to say thank you. Realizing you could have been doing anything else you wanted to do right now. You could be worshiping or fellowshipping um, on another site or in another virtual experience. But we consider it an honor and a honor and a privilege that you are here with us today. And we thank you. Now, if this is your first time or if you're a reoccurring guest or if you are a member, we say it every week, but we want to continue to say it. Stay connected with us. Stay connected with us on our website, www.insidenewzion.org. That is our touch point that we put in place for all of our information. You can log on to see what we're doing, and we'll track to see what you have going on too as well. There are some email addresses if you're needing additional information. Feel free to shoot us an email, info at insidenewzion.org, and we'll make sure that you have everything that you need. Now, if we were here in the sanctuary, this would be the point of the service to where we take an opportunity to greet each other. Obviously, since we're virtual, we can't greet each other and love on each other, hug each other like we would normally do. But what we can do and what you can do right now, grab your phone, um, whether it's you want to send a text or a phone call, reach out to somebody. Or if you're on the couch at the breakfast table and somebody's beside you, just lean over to them. There's an opportunity for you to greet somebody like we normally would. So now, I'm going to give everyone 60 seconds just to greet somebody. Phone call, text, high five, hug, any way that meets exactly where you are. But I'll also give you this opportunity too, that if this is for you, here's a great time for you to give your offer. And let me just say, we thank you, every faithful giver, every time that somebody gives. We appreciate it. Because we still have a lot of ministry that's going forward. And it's because of you being obedient to the will of God that we're able to do or continue to do what we do. Here's an opportunity to greet somebody and here's an opportunity to give your all. So you have 60 seconds to do so. All right. Everybody ready? We ready? We ready? All right. Let's go.
The Summer Food Service Program has recognized New Zion as a community site during the summer months of 2020. And we're excited because this is our first year. June 15th through August 14th, free lunches are served from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday through Friday. Kids 18 and younger are welcomed. New Zion, we want to be well by learning. Our virtual small groups are a great way to fellowship, build relationships, and gain biblical knowledge. At New Zion, find out more today at InsideNewZion.org slash groups or at Facebook. New Zion, be well. We want to see you there. The graduation team would like to thank everyone who came out to support our graduates. The car parade was a great success. We would like to wish the graduates much success in their future endeavors. This is from our graduation team. Are you a member of New Zion and a business owner? If so, we would love to showcase your business in our New Zion business directory. For more information, please contact the New Zion business directory team at bizdirect at insidenewzion.org. Again, that's bizdirect at insidenewzion.org. Did you receive our Inside New Zion This Week newsletter in your email on Monday? If not, look inside your spam, junk, or promotions folder. It might be hiding there. If so, move it into your inbox folder. Also, add info at insidenewzion.org to your contact list or address book. Again, add info at insidenewzion.org to your contact list or address book. The We Speak team invites you to get moving for racial justice by participating in the CRRS Civil Rights Race Series one Million Miles for Justice. The virtual event encourages walkers, runners, cyclists, and supporters to register and complete at least 25 miles in 30 days. The purpose of this event is to raise funds and help fight against the injustices in our communities. Proceeds from this event will be donated to the NAACP. This is for all fitness levels. This is for men, women and children let's get our family friends and co-workers involved we start on monday june 15th and it ends wednesday july 15th check out our website for more details did you miss our service at 10 a.m no worries our service is still shown on facebook and on our youtube channel at New Zion Be Well. Again, that's on Facebook and on our YouTube channel at New Zion Be Well. It's book club time. We are reading the popular book Soar by Bishop T.D. Jakes. We will be reading chapter 6 through 9. Join our New Zion book club Tuesday, June 16th at 7 p.m. Let's soar. Coming this July. Join us for Noonday Bible Study on Wednesdays from 12 noon until 1230 with Minister Myra Payne. Again, mark your calendars starting in July, Wednesdays at noon for our Noonday Bible Study at New Zion. These are your announcements for this week. Remember to be well. this morning, we can begin to declare that we serve a God who is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right
Amen. For those of you who have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Meet me at verse 12. As we'll continue in on our sermon series that we started last week entitled Three's Company. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. chapter 13 and we'll start at verse 12 and I'll be reading from the new international version and I'll give you a second just to find it so last week as we initiated or we launched um first installment of this sermon series again entitled three's company we dealt with where david as he was praying said surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and pretty soon we're going to talk about in first thessalonians where paul said rejoice evermore pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks then I'm sure we're going to deal with the three Hebrew boys that were beating unto God. And they were none other than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So now what we're finding here is that God gives a lot of revelation in groups of threes. Groups of threes. So we're dealing with another set of threes here that the Lord is giving us insight to. And I'll go ahead and read from the New International Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, where it says, For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I am fully known. And here's where we are in verse 13. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love but the greatest of these is love so if you have these three things you're in good company faith hope and love father I pray that none of us will leave here today unchanged in Jesus name amen So 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is another famous chapter, similar to as I announced last week with Psalm 23, in regard that it is one that many people are familiar with. Typically, we refer to this chapter as the love chapter, simply because all throughout the entirety of chapter 13, we're hearing Paul push this one term, which is love. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not bear record, love never fails. He's saying consistently, talking consistently about love. But now in the middle of him talking about love, or at the tail end of it, in this chapter, now we find the introduction of three virtues that are the greatest for the believer, what we see here in the Bible, and that is faith, hope, and love. But then Paul reminds us that the greatest of even these three is still love. So this morning, we're going to deal with these three terms as we're again, as again, we're talking about being in good company or three's company. And first, let's deal with this term of faith. I love talking about faith. Faith is a wonderful thing. Now, to give you a scripture, just for a point of reference, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, here's what the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We must pay attention to the beginning of it to where it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
So now, if all of us are the believers that we should be, and we want to earn God's favor, or we want to have God's favor, we want to make the Lord smile, we want to be a blessing unto God, if we are not people of faith, it will never happen. But if we are people that are led by God, loved by God, and in love with him, then we are led by faith. Now, faith is the currency of the kingdom. And so now when you think about that, a currency is a way that you um, orchestrate a transaction. So now we give money here to Walmart. Once we give them money, they give us something in exchange. So God will give us something in exchange once we give him faith. So if I give the Lord faith, then I have the right to expect something from the Lord. Simply because faith is like kryptonite to God. That is his weakness. We see this throughout the Bible with the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was on his way to deal with somebody else. And then some woman who dealt with an issue for 12 years just touched the hem of his garment. But Jesus was not able to continue because he had to deal with this woman simply because she gave him faith. So once she gave him faith, he gave her exactly what she needed. And that confirms that faith is the currency of the kingdom. Now, the other thing about faith is that faith comes through the word, comes through the word. Now, in Romans chapter 10, verse 7, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God. So now we have faith. We have faith, but faith comes from what is spoken to us. What is spoken to us. This is not foreign to us, being not hard for us to understand even right now. A couple months ago, the CDC and the government, the White House, and everybody who collectively put their minds together said that we were about to be in shelter in place because there was a pandemic that was making its way into our society and our current culture. So we heard that word, and because of that word that led our faith based on that word to go to Walmart, Harris Teeter, Food Lion, and all the different places, and we bought up all the toilet paper, all the paper towels, all the water, and all the ding-dongs, ho-hos, and Twinkies, and everything that we can get it. And the reason why we did it was because we heard a word. If we had not heard a word, we would not have gone to the store and raided everything that they had. But because we heard a word, then we activated our faith. So here it is. God is speaking to all of us and he has a word for you and I and the point of that word is so that we might activate our faith so here it is if God has spoken something into your life then you can take it to the bank because God's credit is good and if his credit is good then you can live by faith and walk by faith and you don't have to see it to believe it but here's the thing. We operate off of the word that God has spoken and we live by faith. But guess what? If God don't speak it, then you don't go. Because now I only march at, after the beat of the word that I am hearing. And I'll tell you, a lot of believers, a lot of blood-washed believers in the name of Jesus get themselves in trouble. Why? Well, because they're chasing after something that God never authorized them to chase. We see this in Peter. Because now when Peter was walking on water, this was a huge faith move that Peter was able to do. But Peter only got up out of the boat when Jesus looked at him and said, come to me. Because faith comes through the word. The other thing I want to give to you here about faith before we move to hope is that faith is seen from God's point of view. There's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that talks about the Lord opening up our eyes of understanding. 
And the thing is, is that the Lord wants us to see things the way that he sees it. So if God sees it a certain way, the Lord wants us to see it just as he sees it. So now faith is us seeing things from God's point of view. Faith is seeing things from the Lord's perspective. Now, the challenge for us is that we have everything that is clouding our vision. And so now we must remember that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because when you walk by sight, you'll see the mountains, you'll see the giants, you'll see the weather, you'll see all the things that can hinder you or stop your progression. But when you walk by faith and not by sight, it doesn't matter if you see it at all because your sight is not what's leading you, but it is your faith that is leading you. But in order to get there, we must see things the way that God sees it. Those of you who have been with me for years, you'll always hear me talk about the formula of faith. And I love talking about the formula of faith because if we're to understand that we must see things the way that God sees it, then that means that we have to see it happen before it happens until it happens. That we have to see ourselves there before we're there until we're there. You have to see yourself gradually before you graduate until you graduate you gotta act like you've won before you've won until you've won if you're single you gotta act like you got somebody before you get somebody until you get somebody you gotta see yourself out of debt before you're out of debt until you're out of debt you gotta see yourself healed before you're healed until you're healed you got to be the accountant before you're the accountant until you're the accountant. You got to walk in victory before you're the victory until the victory. You got to see yourself there before you're there until you're there. You got to say that you've won before you've won until you've won. And to God be the glory, church, who I am in Christ, I have the ability to call things that aren't as though they were why well because my faith tells me that I don't have to see it in order to say it but now I can see it because I walk by my faith and not by my sight so now faith 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 and then the Bible tells us about hope these three things remain faith Hope and love. But now let's talk about hope. Now, I want to point you to a scripture that ties faith and hope together, and that's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. Because faith and hope are close cousins. Because they want the same thing. The only difference is hope is the desire for what you're after. Faith is the belief that it will come. So now, just as a quick example, if you can imagine that I, a couple of years, when I was younger, when I was getting in college around 20, 21 or 22 years old. So now I wanted a car. I was hoping for a car. Because it was something that I wanted. It was at the point in my life where I really wanted one. So I hoped, I hoped, I had a desire that I would get a car. So I spoke with my grandmother. And my grandmother, being the great grandmother that she was, she helped me get a car because she loved me that much. But it started with my hope. But I had to have faith that she would help me get there. So my hope is the desire that I need my faith to help execute on. So now, here's another scripture I want to give to you real quick. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, it says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, in which enter into that within the veil. 
I want to start back at verse 19. With which hope we have as an anchor. Hope is your anchor. And as we know, a anchor serves two purposes for a ship. Now, the first purpose is that it keeps the ship ship from drifting away, but an anchor also adds stability in a storm. I'm going to say those two things again. An anchor is used for two reasons. The first is to keep the ship from drifting, and the second is add stability to the ship in the storm. So now, without an anchor, it is easy to drift away. So now, it's easy for you to drift away from the people that you love. Or it's easy to drift away from your dreams. Or it's easy to drift away from a vision that you want had, had if you are not anchored in something. So your anchor is what adds stability and keeps you from drift, drifting away, particularly in a storm. So now, drifting, drifting, drifting. We see that many of us have drifted away from many things, especially God. And the reason why we've drifted is because we didn't have anything to anchor us down. And I want to say right here now under the sound of my voice that the anchor that we need is our hope. But the hope that we have that desire for the Lord, that is what gives us stability in life. And I want to challenge somebody here right now under the sound of my voice. Yes, your life may be chaotic and may be all over the place. And it seems like you're scattered and it seems like things are not coming together. And I want to challenge you in the way that you're living your life. Because I guarantee the reason why things are leaving your control and all over the place is because because your soul has yet to be anchored and your anchor needs to be in nothing else but the Lord now I want to tell you this also about an anchor the bigger the ship the bigger your anchor needs to be so if you have a small ship then all you need is a small anchor but if you have a big ship you need a big anchor so if you want to live a big life, then you need a big anchor that can give you stability in your life. So I want to challenge everybody here. Don't settle for an ordinary life with a small anchor, but you need something that can anchor you down and keep you stable when the storms arise. And so now this anchor that we're talking about, this hope is not something that you can find from outside of you, but it is something that you can only find from the inside. And so that anchor that will keep you secure is Jesus Christ himself and the hope of glory and the hope that you have in him that he is your God, he is your Savior, and he is the one that is caring for you day after day after day after day. So I'm going to challenge everybody here. Don't put your hope in the bottle. Don't try to find your hope in somebody's bed. Don't try to find your hope in your finances and your hope, sure enough, is not in your job. But I want to be, be like the hymn writer said, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness this I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground to God be the glory all of the ground all of the ground is sinking sand so don't put your trust in anything else but the anchor that will keep your life together there is only one anchor that will secure your position and that anchor is based on your hope that you have in the Lord and I won't trust in anything else you can't sex your way to this you can't drink your way to this you can't buy your 
way to this. It only comes through the hope that you have in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So now the Bible says faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. <clears throat> but then it says the greatest of these is love. See, love is an interesting thing because love is an action word. But it also needs to be defined because there's many songs that were out there that speaks about love. But what is the love that the word is telling us about? And so now this is that agape love that is selfless, that has nothing to do with me, but everything to do with somebody else. So now the scripture that we see that per perfectly describes this type of love is John chapter 15, verse 13, where it says, greater love hath no man than this, than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. Now, that's love. Love is more than what you just say. Love is what you do. Because the Lord didn't just say, I love you from heaven. But he sent his love from heaven down into earth so that he might join us in this hell that we're living in. And so now, when the Bible says the greatest of these is love, what it's saying is that faith is good, hope is good, but there is nothing like love. Oh, listen, church, I want to challenge everybody here. Get to a place to where you love everybody and love them with the same intensity that the Lord has loved you. And love is not just you doing something nice for somebody, but love is demonstrated when you go out of your way and you sacrifice for somebody. And that's why it is the greatest virtue because it requires the most sacrifice. Now, love sometimes doesn't feel good. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Because sometimes the way that a friend shows that they love you is sometimes telling you the things that you don't want to hear. When you truly love somebody, you'll tell them that they got a booger in their nose before they go and embarrass themselves in front of everybody. When you truly love somebody, you'll tell them that, listen, your breath is not all the way together right now before they go and embarrass themselves. But the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend, but they're faithful from a friend that truly loves you and so now sometimes the wounds we receive from the Lord are simply because he loves us because whom the Lord loves loves he also chastises so sometimes I will be chastened by God not because he's angry with me but simply because he loves me and I want to wrap this sermon up here right quick, church, that there is no greater love than what the Lord has demonstrated for us. Because let's be truthful, all of us deserve to go straight to hell. All of us deserve to bust hell wide open because we've had the affair, we've had the abortion, we've done the dirt, we stole the cigarettes, we cussed everybody out, we stuck our middle finger up at everybody that we should not have, we've done all all the things that we should not have done and it literally broke the heart of God but God even though we deserve death loved us enough that he paid the penalty he took the punishment he took everything in his body that was due to us why well because he loved us there is no greater love than this than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. 
You're in good company if you have faith, hope, and love. But now the Bible says the greatest of these is love. I want to give you an opportunity to enter into a love relationship with the Lord. A love relationship. Love relationship. So we're talking about all of these things. But it only matters. It only matters to those who have said, Father, I get it. I get the fact that you love me. I get the fact. I get the fact, dear God, that you saw my wickedness and you saw my unrighteousness. And God, I thank you that in spite of my unrighteousness, you loved me enough to not allow me to go straight to hell. But you intervene and you rescued me. This is what we talk about when we talk about salvation. Salvation. Salvation is why Jesus Christ came down into this world. To save you from yourself and to save you from your sins. And all it takes is for you, I, all of us just to accept him as our Lord and our Savior. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you want to do so here today. All it requires is a few things. You submitting everything that you have unto the Lord. That's all it requires. Now, I want to pray a prayer with you real quick. If this is you, if this is you, just bow your head right where you are and repeat after me. Say, Father, I need you. Forgive me for all of my sins. Come into my heart. Father, I need you. Forgive me for all of my sins. Come into my heart. We call this the prayer of salvation. Now, this is just a prayer for you to initiate this conversation with God. But it will take you fully submitting to everything that you have to him. Now, there's a number flashing across the screen right now. Here's a number. If you're ready to pray this prayer or if you already have and you feel God touching you on your shoulder, calling you by your name, call this number right now. Call this number right now. We have a minister on the other line waiting just to talk to you, pray to you, help pray with you, help you through this process. But you have to pick up the phone and call. Now, maybe you've already given your heart unto the Lord and you're saved. But now you just want to rededicate your life unto the Lord. If this is you, you just want to rededicate your life unto God. And say, God, I get it now. I get it now. I was in your will, but somehow I wasn't anchored and I drifted away. And if God is calling you back, you feel the God calling you back into his will, and you want to rededicate your life unto him, call that number to his will. We want to talk with you, pray with you, welcome you back into a covenant relationship with the Lord. The third thing is if you are without a church home, you've been following us, or maybe this is your first time, and you feel that this could be a place that God wants you to plant your feet, we would absolutely love to have you. Call that same number too as well. Call it so that we can engage with you, so we can talk to you, tell you a little bit about our ministry, how we would love to partner with you and have, have you be a part of it. Now, the fourth and final thing, the fourth and final thing that I want you to do right now, call this number if you just want prayer. We all have a lot of things going on. Don't you do this by yourself. Life was not meant to be done by yourself. For the word says in the book of Genesis, God, after he created Adam, said, it is not good for man to be alone. We don't want you to be alone in whatever you're going through. We will partner with you in prayer right now if you just call that number. As the spirit of God continues to move and, and you're thinking about where you are, and so now as you're thinking about where you are and you're about to make that call, we're going to continue in worship right now just so God can continue to prompt you and prick your heart and send you to, to the direction of making that call. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. Stretch him wide, he hung his head for me. He died. That's love. That's love. That's not how 
you and me, that's love, that's love. Amen. Listen, thank you again for joining us here for our 10 a.m. service on this Sunday morning. We are thrilled every week that you tune in and partner with us in this ministry. Now, as it was stated by Reverend Patterson at the beginning, always when you tune in, share all of share this on Facebook, YouTube, send the link out, whatever you can do. We want to allow everybody else to get plugged in and participate in our worship experience. Now, before we get ready to dismiss, before we get ready to dismiss, this is the Sunday. If we were here in the sanctuary, we would recognize our graduates. We have a good group of people that are graduated from high school, college, or trade school, and so we just want to rally behind them today. So now, here in a few moments, what you're going to see is a slideshow just so you can see all the individuals that are graduating from our church and our ministry. If you know any of them, make sure you call them, congratulate them, tell them that you love them and you thank thankful for your, your time that you've had with them and you wish them well. All right, let us watch right now. Good morning, New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We're here to introduce our 2020 graduates. First, we have Ms. Tasha Brigale Morrison. She is earning a master's in education from the Concordia University at Portland with an area of concentration in curriculum and instruction. Dwayne Purnell Allgood Jr. He's a graduate of Charlotte Mecklenburg Virtual High School. His next step is Palm Beach State College, West Palm Beach, Florida. His favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. His favorite quote is showing off is a fool's idea of glory. His community activities are the First Teeth Charlotte, Huff Golf, Burkdale Golf Club, Northstone Golf Camps, and we want to congratulate his parents, Dwayne and Michelle Allgood. Rochelle R. Bagwood. She's a graduate of Olympic High School. Her next step is Central Piedmont Community College. Her favorite Bible verse is Romans 8, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Her favorite quote, no rain, no flower. Interest, aspiring to be a pu published author in Love Dogs. Rodney Crowder II. He's a graduate of Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology. His next step is Central Piedmont Community College, Passport Program, his achievements are the AB Honor Roll, his hobbies are video games, and his parents are Mr. and Mrs. Rodney and Michelle Crowder. Bria Yvette Faison. She's a graduate of Mallet Creek High School. Her next step is Winston-Salem State University. Her favorite Bible verse is 1 Corinthians 15.10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me and was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Her favorite quote, the question isn't who is coming to let me, but who is going to stop me. Her awards and honors, she's a National Technical Honor Society, Key Club, Order of the Mavericks, Decca Club, and she played softball two years as, as a captain. Her parent is Miss Tanya Faison. Kendrick Fox. He's a graduate of Olympic High School. His next step is Central Piedmont Community College. His awards and special recognitions are he's on the AB Honor Roll and he has received a Good Character Award. His hobbies are drawing, video games, football, and basketball. His interest is to become a professional artist and painter. We want to congratulate his parents, Antonio and Yolanda Fox. Erica Dawn Gibson. She's a graduate of Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology. Her next step is Winston-Salem State University. Her favorite Bible verse is Joshua 1.9. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Her favorite quote, my past has not defined me, destroyed me, deterred me, or defeated me. It has only strengthened me. Her church activities, she's a youth church volunteer, and we would like to graduate her mother and father, William and Crystal Miller. 
Ms. Tracy Alicia Simpson. She's a graduate of Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology. Her next step is North Carolina Central University. Her favorite Bible verse is Romans 5.8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, God Christ died for us. Her favorite quote, sun comes up and we start again. Her school activities are, she was a member of the marching and concert band. She played the instrument. We want to congratulate her parents, Thomas and Melanie Simpson. Kaya Imani Smith. She's a graduate of Olymp Olympic High School. Her next step is Central Piedmont Community College. Her favorite Bible verse is Joshua 1.9. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Her favorite quote, never feel gu guilty for doing what's best. Walk away even if it hurts. Her achievements, she received a superior rating in piano from the North Carolina Federation of Music Clubs. She's a dancer of the Diamond Competition Team for prestigious Dance Center and co-captain on the Olympic High School Dance Team. Her parents, Sheldon and Ebony Laney Crawford, David and Kaya Smith. All right, once again, congratulations to all of our graduates. We are proud of you, we're thankful for you, and so we're believing that success is in your hands and the best is yet to come. All right, let's get ready to dismiss. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling, and able to send you faultless in the presence of his glory and with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Father, faith, hope, and love, that's good company for us. So, Father, we thank you, dear God, that we also have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit with us every day. We appreciate you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all and we'll see you next week.